challenge in November. But the first step starts with gratefulness and thankfulness. And so I am very grateful and thankful for my wife, Jane. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an easy process. Consistently, she has led with love, with direction, and with drive. And I'm very grateful for her. I'm thankful for my parents, for what the, the, the yeah, seeds yeah. that they have planted, yeah. that we are servant leaders. My son, my dad, State Senator Frank Ravan and Gene Ravan, please give away. Yeah. My sister, Judy, my sister Francis, brother-in-law, and my two daughters. So, and uh, sometimes you can't articulate things like this by standing on a chair. But I'm thankful, I'm thankful to the voters of Northwest Indiana, and I'm thankful to all of you, the stakeholders in my campaign, those of you who believe and have faith that I will make a difference compassionately for our district, for the people. And I also want to thank union men and women who have endorsed me from the very beginning, and I want to thank Director Millsap, United Steelworkers, and Jerome Davidson for being committed and having faith and understanding that we have a mutual friendship where I look out for their interests and they look out for mine. I have no challenge. And first I want to talk about and not forget about who I am and let you know that I haven't changed in what we what we believe in. And, and, and really, you need to go back from my father on to me. For 15 years I sat across the table from people who were struggling, who set me and gave me the skill set to understand what it means to get a pandemic. Not to get a hand out, but a hand up. To be able to look in someone's eye and say, I want to be able to help you find a job. I want to be able to help you better yourself so you can thrive in our community. Those are the skill sets that I've taken to Washington, D.C. So what we've delivered on and what we focused on, the American Rescue Plan. The American Rescue Plan rescued our economy. It, we, it got children back in school so that parents can get back to work. It gave PPP loans so that Chow Bella can exist and the employees that are serving us here would stay employed. Yay. To right. thousands and thousands of different small businesses and large businesses through Lake, Porter, and LaPorte County. Our focus is on rescuing the economy. So then we go forward and we have the infrastructure bill. For the first time in a 30 years since the Eisenhower era presidency, we have an investment in infrastructure. So what that means for our area, for our area, what that means is we are delivering on promises. We're putting the American worker back to work, men and men back to work. And it gives it certainty because we're rebuilding our roads. We're rebuilding our bridges. We're taking lead out of water so we drink safe water for our children. We're putting investments in ports and airports and broadband. And what this does is it invests in our future for 10 years. And it puts people to work at the steel mill because co-chair, as co-chair of the steel caucus of 100 members, I made sure and focused that we had a Buy American provision. So what does that mean for us? That means our driving economy, steel industry in Northwest Indiana, which is the top, the top producing steel industry in the United States, right here in our region, produces jobs. And more importantly, it produces steel for a bridge that makes that bridge safer so that when we drive across it, it's better. And it makes businesses want to come in our area and invest. That's what the double tracking does. The double tracking in the South Shore will expand our commuter rail. It'll create shorter distances so that if people work in Chicago, they can come, time, come back and spend time with their children because we cut that travel time down. It makes our area more livable and it allows us to have a greater community. So ultimately, those are things that we've done. And then you have to envision the future. I'm a co-sponsor of the American Competes Act. And what that means is it's the vision for semiconductors and chips. I just want to explain the ecosystem of this. United, United Auto Workers are working in the Ford plant in Heckwish. When they don't have chips and semiconductors, they stop working. Production stops working. Then the steel mill slows down. And when the steel mill slows down, the steel workers stop working. When the appliances stop working, steel stops working. 
And you know what happens? Less workable hours in the use. The Teamsters do less driving. Laborers do less work. Mm -hmm. People come to Chalvela less because we're making less. But when we have that certainty, and when we pass the American Competes Act, where we domestically manufacture semiconductors and chips here in the United States, we invest in the American worker. We invest in ourselves in Northwest Indiana. And if you can close your eyes before you go to bed tonight, there are 15 hubs, tech hubs, that will be developed in the United States. I am going to pursue that Northwest Indiana has the skill set, the labor force, the talent, and the investment to be a tech hub so that we can be producing. Healthcare access. I talked about who I was and what I was for 15 years. Making sure people have access to healthcare and mental health is a priority of mine. I did it for 15 years, I'll continue to do it now. Voted for a piece of legislation that slashed and allowed us to negotiate drug pricing. Voted for a piece of legislation that makes... Wow. Insulin. I, that happens to me every speech I give. It allows insulin to be capped at $35. I haven't changed. I'm still compassionate. I still care about my community. I was born and raised here in Hammond, Indiana. And I mentioned that because we're going to have outsiders coming in. We're going to have outsiders that are going to say, welcome back home. It's good to be home. The fact of the matter is they haven't lived here for 30 years. And they're going to start telling us what we should think. And they're going to do something else. They're going to divide us. We don't need that. So when I talk about creating jobs and creating a quality of life for your families, that's what's important. When I talk about making sure the steel industry thrives, that's what's important. When we're creating new environments to bring in industry and businesses, that's what's important. And what's important as of yesterday for all of us to understand is elections have consequences. Elections have matters. I have been a pro-woman candidate from the very beginning. Yay! pro-woman in the sense that it's a speech. I mean, I have voted for and co-sponsored pieces of legislation, and here's what you need to know. I will fight for your reproductive rights and your rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's the bottom line. Outside forces are going to come in and say we're challenged, and what we need is unity. What I need is your help. What I need you to understand is that if you tell a friend, if you knock on a door, if you make a phone call for us, it will make a difference. Because there are going to be outside forces that are going to try and take this away. And if I've done anything and learned anything from Congressman Vyskowski, who has endorsed me and believed in me and my father, I will do anything to protect the first district in my home from what could be. So that priority of the working man because it's out there. And so I give you my word, if you give me your help, I will protect our first district, I will protect women's rights, and I will protect you, and I will make sure that we have a thriving economy. Join me, volunteer, but I need your help. We are in a battle for the future of the first district, and I need all of you. I thank you all very much. I love my wife more than anything. God bless you.